all sins are the same and different. Meaning, I'm going to explain that. All sins are the same means the wages of sin is death. Whether you lied, you stole something, you murdered somebody, any, any sin that you make is the same thing. They all lead to death. Therefore, they are equal. Now, what is not equal about the sin is the level of punishment. If you steal a pen, it might not, it might not even be noticed that you stole a pen. But guess what? If you steal a car, then yeah, they're going to find out, okay, something here happened. So, the bigger the sin, the bigger the punishment. Over time. All right, last question. Sorry. We're over time. We just got to, sorry, I'm sorry. I, at the table, I'll be back there. Is that okay? All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I was just surprised. I thought someone would ask this earlier. Um, I guess as best as you could, as quick as you could. Um, what does the Bible, or in your view, um, the issue of homosexuality is a uh -huh. huge thing. Uh -huh. Last right. question. All right, last question. Yeah. And I How just much want to know, do we have? I just want to know, no, I guess I won't even get into the biblical aspect, but what do you, do you find homosexuality to be a sin? It doesn't matter what I find. Oh, okay, then I mean, what the do Bible, you believe the Bible says? Homosexual behavior is a sin, not homosexual feelings. We all have attractions we ought not act on, right? There's a difference between attractions and actions. I have attractions I ought not act on. So, so to be attracted to... Uh, someone of the same sex, if you act on that, it's a sin. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. You say, well, Jesus never talked about homosexuality. No, he talked about all sexual immorality, because whenever he used the phrase sexual immorality, that meant any sexual activity outside of the marriage of a man and a woman. Fornication, adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, rape, incest, whatever it is. When he's using that phrase, that's what he means. And of course, Christians believe Jesus wrote the entire Bible through the Holy Spirit. So the entire Bible is inspired. Now, you can make other arguments, uh, natural law arguments. I have a little book on this called Correct, Not Politically Correct, where you don't even bring the Bible into it. But we have to have compassion for people that have these attractions. Why? Because they didn't, they didn't wake up one day and say, I want these attractions. They had them for whatever reason. And so we all have attractions we ought not act on. And so we all have to hold one another accountable to attractions or to actions that are going to hurt themselves or others. So it's not just homosexuality. The reason homosexuality is such a big deal in our society is because all the political things going on around it. Right? So very last thing then on that topic, mm -hmm. by that logic, you would be grouping homosexuality at the same wrongness as speciality and rape, correct? Well, I don't... It's, not, act upon my, it. it's not my opinion what's the, right and wrong. The no. Bible says. The Bible, look, not all sins are the same. People always say all sins are the same. No, sins aren't the same. Jesus implied that sins were different. He said to the Pharisees, he said that you have basically tithed your spices, but you've neglected the weightier matters of the law. Love, justice. So there are, there is a hierarchy of sins. Sexual sin is not the greatest of sins, but it is a sin. And where homosexuality falls on that, that's not for me to decide. The Bible calls all sin, all sex outside of the marriage of a man and a woman sin. Because, let's just take it from a very practical perspective. Very, very practical here. The culture tries to tell you that sin is just physical. I mean, sin is just physical. Sex is just physical. If that were the case, why is it that it's worse when somebody rapes you than when somebody just physically assaults you? Because sex is not just physical. It's emotional. It's moral. It's biological. It's spiritual. There's something beyond sex than just the physical act. And we all know it. Sex is like fire. If you put it in your fireplace, it will warm you. It's wonderful. If you get it anywhere else in your house, it will burn your house down. And we see that. Look, homosexuals didn't, didn't give us really same-sex marriage. You know who did? Heterosexuals through no-fault divorce. No-fault divorce is, is the worst thing that this country ever could have done from, from a marriage perspective because it makes marriage all about the desires of adults, nothing about children. Well, if marriage isn't about children, why is the government even in it? Who cares who loves who? Why, why should the government care whether you have a romantic affinity for somebody else? 
the reason the government's involved in marriage is to perpetuate and stabilize society. That's why the government's involved. Okay, um, a lot said on that one. Hey guys, welcome back again. Um, so, homosexuality in the Bible, is it wrong? Yes. Um, not because I said, I said it, but because um, God said it. There is a difference. Now, he mentioned homosexual behaviors. Well, homosexual behaviors is homosexuality. Let me actually give, let me actually help you guys understand this one. Um, Jesus loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. In a sense, Jesus loves homosexuals, the people. The same way he loves the liars, the murderers, the thief, the, the adulterer, the fornicator, the um, rapist, the uh, everything else you can think of. The um, what? The adulterer, I would mention that. The thief, the idolater, the wrongdoers, the jealous people. Jesus loves all of them because we are people. What Jesus hates is homosexuality, rape, um, murder, lying, stealing or thieving, um, idolatry, adultery, idolatry, jealousy. So God hates the sin, which means when you were born, some people were born with certain certain tendencies that have been passed down through genes or DNAs. Some people are more prone to lying. Some are more prone to uh, deceitful activities. Some are more prone to homosexuality. Some are more prone to um, pedophilia. Some are more prone to um, stealing, do all kinds of stuff. The difference I can mention is when you act upon it. For instance, let's say my biggest issue is um, stealing. Oh, actually no. Let's say my biggest issue is smoking cigarette. I don't smoke. So what happens is Satan would never come to me no, okay. In that example, let's say in that in this example, I'm a smoker. God loves me as a smoker, but he hates smoking. So what would Satan do? Satan is like, I know he has a weakness for smoking. I'm gonna bring smoke smoking temptation to him. Well, when Satan brings the temptation to you, that's a way to show that, that God wants to wants you to actually fight against that temptation so you can have power over that temptation. Right now, as me as me in real life, Satan would never come to me with smoking because it wouldn't work on me. He wouldn't come with me to with uh, he wouldn't come to me with homosexuality because it wouldn't work on me. So temptation in a sense is a good thing. Or it can be a bad thing. It's a good thing, or it's a bad thing, if you actually fall into it every single time. But it's a good thing if you actually ask God, God, I know Satan just came to tempt me, help me win over that temptation. When you win over that temptation, there's a, there's a good feeling about it. You're like, now you're more confident you can win over it again and again and again. So temptation is not a bad thing all the time. But you have to be willing to fight against it so you don't have so whenever Satan comes with it, it's like he's throwing um a grain of rice at you because it wouldn't hurt you anymore. So the behavior, the the feelings 
is the temptation. The behavior is when you act upon it, which now means you just sinned. Second thing, um, all sins are the same and different. Meaning, I'm going to explain that. All sins are the same means the wages of sin is death. Whether you lied, you stole something, you murdered somebody, you committed fornication, um, jealousy, envy, hatred, any, any sin that you make is the same thing. They all lead to death. Therefore, they are equal. Now, what is not equal about the sin is the level of punishment. For instance, when you were born, when you were younger, if even, okay, let's say right now, what would be the consequence between you stealing a pen versus stealing a car? Actually, if you steal a pen, it might not, it might not even be noticed that you stole a pen. But guess what? If you steal a car, then yeah, they're going to find out, okay, something here happened. So, the bigger the sin, the bigger the punishment. I didn't say the result, I said the punishment, because the result is death. But the punishment is, if, if you stole a, a notebook, you might get a slap on the hand, but if you break in a house, you might get into jail. So the punishment is bigger for the level of sin. Which means, like a, a random sin that you commit is different than homosexuality because God says homosexuality is not just a sin, it's an ab abomination. So homosexuality is higher than a random sin that you committed. And I'm not going to go into all the biblical, um, right now, if you want me to go to all the biblical thing, let me know in the comment section below, I'll make a video on it. So I can explain to you how, what, what the level of sins are. Because there are levels. Now, they are the same, meaning they all lead to death. But the punishment is different. And that's basically what he was trying to explain to that young man in that video. So, guys, let me know uh, if you want me to, to go deeper into biblical example or biblical text, context. So you guys can understand exactly what, what the difference is between sin and abomination and iniquities. But that was it for today. I'll make it short. Hope to see you guys again. Um, until then, bye for now.